What's up guys, it's BC Builds. Uh, just gonna do a review on uh, a few things that I purchased. Um, a few off-brand, well not off-brand, they are I guess professional brand and then one's just a Chinese brand. Uh, a few things that surprised me. Um, I make these videos because not everybody has the money to spend a shit ton of money on fucking machines, 300 to 500 dollars, even you know I'm not saying just scratchers, but you know, there's a lot of artists out there that have families to feed and you know, you need more than one machine, you know, and it's not always, you know, easy to spend $500 on a machine. You know, even if you do make good money, some people have the money and some people make the money and it's not a problem and this video isn't for you guys. But for the people out there that are money conscious, you know, like me, I have a kid, you know, even if I was rich, I don't want to spend money unnecessarily if I don't need to. Um, this is why I'm not reviewing, you know, like my next gen machines, you know, my workhorse irons, you know, any of my board shit, you know. Because every those are name brands. Everybody knows those machines are fucking awesome. Well, it's personal opinion, but they sell because they're good. You know, those brands have already proven themselves. And some of the stuff I'm showing you, you might have heard of, but might be skeptical. Uh, first, what I'm going to show you is these machines. I got these off of eBay. They were 40 bucks a piece. They are Luo's tattoo machines. You can see, I'm trying to move the light here. One, the shader, and then the liner. Um, what you might notice is they have really short coils on them. They're really small machines. Um, they're 7 8 coils. I had to raise the spring decks up and the coils a little bit so they could use uh, disposable tubes. Um, but right out of the box, these are really high quality. They use all solid uh, brass parts. The machines are CNC cut. Uh, the coils are actually real copper wire. They're not fucking plated. Um, the only thing is it's a chrome plated contact screw. You know, that's easy to change. Everything else is good. Uh, it's got a steel thumb screw, which is actually loose. They might be out of tune a little bit. I was fucking with them. Um, everything is good on them. Geometry, the two vice is even. Um, and they, I ran one at unloaded, I think at around nine and a half volts for about eight hours and it didn't overheat. Uh, this is the shader. This is at 6.5 volts. That's 6.5 volts on the shader. And then the liner, which has the same 7 8 uh, 10 wrap coils, because they're shorties. Little 8 wrap ones wouldn't do shit. Um, that's at 6.5 volts. Same voltage. Might look a little funny going through the camera, but that's just kind of how it is. And the springs on these, they're not like traditional shitty Chinese tattoo springs. They're actually really good. On the liner, it's 18 or 20 in the front and then a 20 gauge in the back, which is, you know, most common for a liner. And then the shader, it's a longer 18 in the front and then a 20 in the back. That's how I normally run most of my machines. And like I said, for 40 bucks, these, these are the closest Chinese machines to you're gonna get as a professional machine. Everything on this is professional grade. Now, I can't say that all of his machines are gonna be like this. I had the problem that, because it was such a short machine, the disposable tubes wouldn't fit, but you know, I remedied that real quick with like six washers on each machine. Fucking like 90 cents worth of shit. Um, so those are really good for what you pay. 40 bucks and they work. They fucking awesome fucking gray wash shader. And that's good. It doesn't hit super hard. It hits hard enough to run up to like a 7. You could use a 9 on the liner. So if you don't have the money and all you have is around that, definitely recommend buying them. You know, even if you have the money, they are good machines and I'm going to run them. You know, they're not going to be my daily runners. I have better machines, but I am going to use them time to time. The other shits that, uh, parts that I found is, I think it was on piercingpro.com, is Ringmaster parts. This is not a Ringmaster frame. This is a, a generic cast iron. It is cast iron frame. It came a little off, so I had to shave down the spring saddle to make it even and a few other minor things, you know. But the coils on them, this is my liner. This is what I use on a daily basis. I used to use uh, my Soba liner, but I just seem to like this one more. Um, it had icon springs on it, 
and they were fine. They were worn out. That's why I was looking for another brand to try out, an off-brand, you know, so I could make a review for you guys. These are Ringmaster Springs. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. No, there you go. Um, usually, I use a 20 in the back and a 20 in the front. But with this one, I went with an 18 in the front and an 18 short spring, so it just has a little bit of give. And for some reason, this machine always sounds off. It's because it's got, like, kind of a little area in there, which makes it fucking echo. So it always sounds a little off. But you guys are going to have to take my word on it. This machine runs fucking amazing. This, because it has the 10 wrap coils, the stilted in the back, which are ringmaster, which were 25 bucks for the coils, which weren't bad. And a whole pack of springs, all sizes and gauges was maybe another 25 bucks or so 50 bucks. I got a thing of coils and a whole bunch of springs. And I had no idea how they were going to work. And they worked really well. So I'm going to run this one real quick. Also, it's 6.5 volts. I'll show you guys, so you don't think I'm fucking lying. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Uh, no. Well, whatever. You're going to have to take my word on that, too, if you're not able to see it. Um, this is at 6.5 volts. Really punchy. And it's 6.5 volts. It's hitting really hard. Uh, I forget what the tension is on the spring. It's a little over 400-something. But I've never really used any kind of stilted coils before, and I thought they looked cool, and I liked the green. These are the only ones I had in green in stock, so I bought them. The stilted coil in the back, this machine runs awesome. It's just a uh, random armature bar, and it's, not a, it's a medium weight one. 18 gauge ringmaster in the front, 20 in the back, the wide one for a little more tension. Uh, it does have, you know, solid brass contact screws and binding posts. Uh, everything's brass on this. Uh, copper works just as well, but copper is more of a magnetic metal, so it'll take away from the, the field, the magnetic field that the coils make. So the brass, it, it conducts el electricity almost as well, but it doesn't absorb the magnetic waves, which will reduce your hit and your speed and whole nine yards. So, for the money, I definitely recommend buying the spring set, and if you need coils, uh, they're a professional brand. You don't need a license to buy them, but they are hand-wound, uh, phenolic washers. Um, they have the E-clips. You can see their T-tops um, with a cool, like, beveled edge on them, nice stilted bottom, you know, like an hourglass shape, high-quality coils, and they come in all sizes, shapes, whatever you can think of. And... This next one here, this frame, I don't recommend buying from them. This is, a, I believe, an iron workhorse. Not workhorse iron, it's iron workhorse frame. This isn't an iron frame, though. It is steel. It's a 1018 steel. And the frame's cool. It's double-sided. Problem with this frame is, is it was crooked as shit. Whoever welded it is a fucking tard. Put it that way. The spring deck was so fucking uneven, I... I had to spend about two hours filing it down even. And the tube vise on the front was all fucked up. It, the tube goes like that. So my next mission is I'm going to just buy another fucking tube vise, a pinch vise one, bolt it onto the bottom or maybe weld it and just cut this one off. Uh, I just got this frame last night. Uh, the guy who taught me the tattoo gave it to me. You know, it's just sitting in his box. Um, you know, just a regular brass contact screw. This one has 18 in the front and 18 or 20 in the back, like my liner. You know, this is a, this is a gray wall shader. The difference is it has a lot longer spring on the front of it, so it bends easier. You know, like you try to bend something from here, it's a little harder to fulcrum. You know, do your science, do your homework, people. That's why. Uh, it's uh, maybe about a dime and a half gap. I don't really go on that. This is also at 6.5 volts. And it has a nice amount of give on it. And it's 116 hertz, 59% uh, duty, zero follow through. Um, so these frames are pretty nice. I like the weight of them. I can't say all of them are this bad because most of them are actually cast. I would stay away from the welded ones. You see on the two vice, the little emblem. Overall, I would stay away from this brand. Uh, these are not were, uh, iron workhorse coils. These are another set of coils I have, which actually turn out are also Ringmaster coils. The older ones they were given to me, they're actually pretty fucking old. Well, maybe about 10 years now. Um, they're 10 wraps, you know, for a shader, which honestly, I don't ever really use 8 wraps unless it's on like a sculpting liner or something. They're a really light shader. Um, it, 
what makes your machine run right is really pretty much in the springs. Um, yeah, I could make this machine run the same with eight rat coils, but just in case I need to run a bigger needle or, you know, pack a little harder, I always buy tens just in case. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with this machine. It's heavy, it's solid. Um, besides it being crooked and I got to put a new vise on it, it's fucking pretty nice, you know. But all together, the money I would spend on this if I bought all new parts, for a nice machine with this frame you're in coils and everything, you're probably looking at about 80 bucks and you have a machine that'll keep up with any fucking pro machine. Um, that's if you know what you're doing. If you are a scratcher and you're an idiot and nobody's ever trained you, you're never going to get a machine to run right. Even if you buy a fucking power supply that tells you everything. Just because it looks like it's saying, you know, at 130 hertz and degrees, right, doesn't mean it's actually doing what it's supposed to. And you can't go by sound. Well, you know when your machine's tuned to what it's supposed to be, you can hear it after a while. But just because this machine may sound a little off to somebody else, this thing runs great to me. Because there's a lot of factors when it comes into the sound, you know, the type of the frame, everything. You know, this machine sounds like a fucking chainsaw. It's because it's got this little cutout in here, which is hollow. It makes an echoing sound in there. This one does not. So it's a more consistent sound. But you're going to have to take my word for it. Both machines run well. And I know there's going to be someone on there who's going to make, leave a stupid comment that I can't tune machines and I'm all wrong. Everything that someone says is all personal fucking opinion. Because I was, you know, checking out the guy, was, you know, my boss, the one who taught me to tattoo. I was checking out his machines and he's an old school guy. And the way he runs his shit is... He, he's insanely fast, you know, he started tattooing back in the day when capacitors were fucking basic and your machines were running balls out, and he still burns holes in fucking springs, but, you know, for one, he doesn't use a color packer, that's a new school thing, he just uses his shader, and his shader and his liner run about the fucking same thing, you know, um, his liner loaded runs at about 160 hertz cycles per second which is fast as shit loaded and it hits like a motherfucker normal you know i guess a new artist or unexperienced that would tear somebody the fuck up but he's extremely fast so he makes it work but what's surprising is his shader is run the same way he has the same exact spring armature bars on everything on both machines which some people say is wrong but you guys want to challenge me, I'll get his machines, I'll make a video, and you say that's all wrong, you can bitch all you want, I'll post some of his fucking artwork, because I guarantee you he can tattoo better than 99% of anybody who's going to look at my fucking page to begin with. So if you guys want to argue that and say I'm wrong, I'll show you his shit, and you'll see, and you guys will look like fucking assholes. His shit heals within a fucking week completely, his color's still, you know, I've seen tattoos that he did when he started, and they still look fucking nice. So, you know, he's been doing his... 15-ish years now? Fuck, I don't even know. But it's all in your hand speed, your style. Because he can make, basically, he can use his liner as a shader, and his shader is a fucking liner. It's just, he knows how to adjust. That's what works for him. And that's what people don't get. There's no one specific way to set up a fucking machine. It's what works for you and your style. Because, you know, my style may be similar to yours or somebody else's, but no one has my exact style, hand speed, etc., etc. That's just how it works. You have to trial and error. You know, you have to take the time, you have to be patient, because I couldn't even come to your house and tune a machine for you. I fucking build machines. I haven't been doing this this long, but I've built probably about a thousand machines at this fucking point. It, I was made to do it, you know, and not all different machines, my boss makes me strip them down and mix match parts, it's just so I learn the ins and outs, you know, I'm not saying I'm the best, there's people that are far better, but I know how to make a machine run nice, at least for my taste, but if I came to your house and tuned a machine, you might not, it might not work well for you, it might tear fucking people up, I like my shit hitting hard, I love hard hitting machines, except for my, you know, gray wash shader, gotta hit a little lighter, but that's, you know, everything's open to interpretation, personal style. There's no one way to do things. So just remember that. And for all you fucking haters who are going to post something stupid, suck a fucking dick. Because I really don't give a shit. You guys are the ones out there that probably have no fucking idea what you're doing. Or taking advice from some fucking asshole on YouTube that has no idea what he's doing. You know, I don't care if you take my advice or not. I'm just posting this for people that want to listen. So if you guys want to see anything else, you want to see more machines, you want to see my good machines... Whatever you guys want to see, fucking let me know. If you have any questions, you want to see some of my artwork, I'll send you guys links. Whatever you guys want, you know. 
but you know, so don't every. I don't want to hear any shit. That's really what I don't want to hear. Is everything I say is my opinion. That's it. Everything else is. You know, this is what I like. This is how I like my shit to run. You know, but my boss thinks everything I do is fucking wrong. My machines run completely fucking different. You know, this machine, which is running fast as hell, would get stuck up in skin with him. His hand moves that fast. You know, and this liner, he. Same thing, he'd be getting hung up in the skin because his hand moves too fast. I haven't been in it that long. I don't have that fast of a hand speed, you know. Like, I know there's another artist in uh, Boulder, Colorado, uh, Colorado who's really good. Uh, I think he has a YouTube channel. Uh, his name is Johnny Galt. He actually builds his own machines, uh, more so than I do. He builds everything, not just putting them together. Uh, I think it's Lotus Irons, um, which I actually do own one of them now. I got it secondhand from somebody else and he builds amazing machines but for instance his color packers run at over 200 cycles per second the one i got is fucking 220 cycles per second which is insanely fast so unless you color in areas insanely fast you're going to chew somebody up but then go on his page or look at his fucking artwork and you'll see you know it's all it's all about your style and your level any questions guys send me a fucking message you know video reply whatever fucking my Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. All right, I read them out.